Church, it's Good Friday, celebration of the most bittersweet day in all of human history. As we've been walking through this Passion Week, Jesus presented himself on Palm Sunday as the King, every day showing up in the temple, teaching, proclaiming that he is the Messiah, the leaders and uh, scribes and Pharisees knew that they must take him down. And so they plotted to kill him. Judas planned to betray him. Thursday night, Jesus celebrated the Passover with his disciples, moving towards the garden, his routine spot of prayer. Everything is moving towards the cross. The mob comes and captures Jesus there in the garden of Gethsemane. They hold a sham of a trial at Caiaphas' house in the middle of the night. The Sanhedrin shows up. The charges that they press against him, he claimed to be the son of God. They understand that this is a declaration that he is the king and that he is the son of God. They transfer him to Pilate in the morning with these charges. He says he's the king of the Jews. Pilate questions him over and over through these trials, Jesus proves himself to be silent, the silent lamb of God, not protesting, not giving self-defense, not defending himself at all, but just sitting there quiet a few times saying, it is as you say, whenever they ask him point blank, are you the Christ? Are you the son of the living God? Pilate is absolutely amazed by his silence, by his lack of response. He tries to pass him off to Herod, but he only comes back. He tries to present him before the crowd. He tries to say, maybe I'll, believe, uh, I'll release Barabbas, but the crowd shouts, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate takes him aside one final time, but Jesus offers again, no response. Pilate presents him to the crowd, draped with a purple robe, a crown of thorns pressed down upon his head. He cries out, what shall I do with your king? Again, they shout, crucify him, crucify him. The charges are written and placed above his head and it reads, the king of the Jews. Jesus will be scourged and whipped. He will be scourged twice. The strength taken out of him that day is beyond imaginable. They give him his cross beam to carry up outside the hill up to Golgotha. He's so weak, he's unable to even bear his cross beam. They grab uh, a bystander, Simeon, and force him to carry it up the hill. Once he's up the hill, they lay him down on that cross beam, take nine inch nails, drive it through the wrists of his hands put one foot on top of the other and drive it through there, place the sign above his head and then hoist him up, up to the center pole where he will hang above the earth suspended nine feet. At nine o'clock, your Lord and savior has been crucified. You see three wooden crosses behind me. You must understand the absolute scorn and shame of the cross. It was a curse word. No Roman citizen would allow to be crucified. It didn't matter how vile their crimes. It was the ultimate, the worst torture invented by the Persians, but perfected by the Romans. To me, the most gruesome, shame-filled way to ever die, to prolong the misery, to hang there naked in absolute shame. And to the Jews, the scripture said, cursed is anyone who hangs on a tree. All of this because Jesus was becoming our curse. See, it's Good Friday, the darkest day in all of history. What it must have been like for the Son of God to be separated from his Father, to cry out from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? To have the wrath of God poured out upon the Son for the weight of our sin but it's also the sweetest day in all of human history as we move towards Resurrection Sunday. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, 
but have eternal life. So on this Good Friday, as you contemplate the darkness and the difficulty of Jesus dying on the cross for your sins, pause. I hope to imagine just a brief more of that moment. And in your heart of hearts, wait and long for Resurrection Sunday. Church, I'll see you on Sunday.